Hi. This video is an evolutionary puzzle where I will show you a simulated system of evolving creatures and ask you to make a prediction of what the outcome will be. This puzzle belongs to a series of puzzles of increasing difficulty. If you follow the series, you'll get some points for each question you answer correctly and then get a place in the final leaderboard. In today's puzzle, we'll have a scenario with three replicators, Spikey, Antonio, and Yaya. These replicators will roam around the forest full of trees in the hopes of finding some fruit to eat. The trees in the forest will produce three types of fruit. The creatures will eat anything they can get their hands on, but each of them prefers the specific fruit that matches their color. Every time a replicator eats a fruit, it will gain two units of resources if it's a fruit they don't particularly like, or three units if it's their favorite food. Each creature can replicate and generate a new, identical creature at the cost of five of these units. And they should probably hurry up to do so, because all creatures will live for exactly 40 seconds. The forest will have nine trees in total, with three trees producing each kind of fruit. Now, before we watch the simulation happen, take some time to write down your thoughts and how you predict that this system will evolve once we press play. You can use pen and paper, you can use your phone's notepad, or you can yell them at your grandma who lives two blocks away. But it's important to not just keep it in your head, as writing it down will force you to flesh out the details of your prediction. In your answer, mention whether any specific replicator type will be favored, whether the total population will stabilize around a certain number, whether there will be a tendency to grow or shrink, and whether, in the long run, you think all types will coexist in harmony, only one type will remain, or all types will eventually become extinct. If you're not sure about how to make sense of this scenario, you can watch my videos introducing the basic evolutionary processes. They'll give you the building blocks to reason out scenarios like this. Once you've got your answer, let's see what happens. If you'd like to create simulations like these on your own, I have created a software named Ghost Garden aimed at exactly that. Support me on Patreon to get access to an alpha version. Come to my Discord for more information. Looking at these results, we can make several observations. One, all three replicators seem to be, on average, equally successful. This makes sense, since the only difference between them is their favorite food, and the forest produces the same amount of fruits of each type. Two, the total population is very stable. After the first couple of minutes while it's stabilizing, it consistently stays very close to 33 replicators for all simulations, independently of which replicator types are more abundant. The reason this happens is because when the total population is low, food is plenty, and the replicators will eat and replicate more, making the population grow. But when things are crowded, then only a few replicators get to eat, and the rest just die out without leaving any offspring behind, and so the total population shrinks. It's for this reason too that, leaving the simulations running for a long time, none of them reach extinction, as it would be very unlucky for two or three replicators to wander the forest and have all the fruit to themselves and still die without finding any. What eventually happened in all scenarios, however, is fixation. This means that all replicators type died out except one. In any scenario like this one, where there are no mutations and selection doesn't favor any specific type, fixation will always happen regardless of population size. If we want several different replicator types to coexist, then we need there to be some selection favoring those with a smaller population so that they will replicate more when their numbers go dangerously low. You gain two points if you predicted that all replicator types would be equally successful, another two points if you predicted that the total population size would stabilize around a certain number, and finally, four points if you predicted that one type would inevitably become fixed. Now that you're familiar with this environment, let's change it up a little. We'll now have all nine trees in the forest produce apples. 
Again, before seeing the simulation play out, try and see whether you can predict what the outcome will be now. While we just made a very minor adjustment, the resulting outcome might not be intuitive at first glance. Ok, let's watch and see what the results are. Surprised? Was this what you predicted? Naturally, in this environment, Yaya is a lot more successful than Spikey or Antonio, and she gets fixed most of the time. Another way to phrase this is to say that in this environment, Yaya is favored by selection. However, selection is just a tendency. As we saw, Yaya gets fixed most of the time, but not all the time. While it's hard to predict the exact percentage, the stronger the selective forces, the higher the proportion of times Yaya will be fixed. For example, in our scenario, Spike and Antonio still got two-thirds of the value that Yaya got for eating an apple. If we change these numbers and we gave them, for example, only one-third of the value instead, then we'd be making selection a lot stronger and therefore drift would play a more minor role in the outcomes. We can also make drift weaker by increasing the population size. We could, for instance, increase the rate at which the trees produce food, which will in turn increase the size at which the population stabilizes. We could also increase the initial population size. This would minimize the impact of drift and make the final outcome more predictable. So, to know how often the final outcome will look like what we expect purely from selection, we need to take into account both the strength of selection and the strength of drift, and also other drivers like mutations. One way to picture this is to imagine the population like a balloon in the air, subject to two forces. One force is selection, and it moves the balloon in the direction we would expect it to. But another force is drift, which is the element of random chance. Drift just moves the balloon in a completely random direction, changing all the time. While our balloon in this scenario will, on average, move in the direction of selection, the actual place it will end up in also depends a lot on drift, with sometimes the balloon even moving in the direction opposite to selection. Another thing to point out is that Spike and Antonio are perfectly capable of surviving in this forest. And in fact, we have seen them thrive when Yayas went extinct. Even though they have no problem surviving when left on their own, the fact that a more effective replicator exists in the same environment and eats the same food makes them go extinct the vast majority of the time. When it comes to evolution, being good isn't enough. To survive, you must be better than the rest. You gain 2 points if you predicted that Yaya would now be favored by selection, and another 5 points if you predicted that Yaya would be fixed in more, but not all the simulations. Because the point of this puzzle is to highlight the importance of drift, I can't give any points for predicting that Yaya would win every single time. This short puzzle was meant to highlight the unpredictability of some evolutionary outcomes. When making predictions, it's very important to distinguish which outcomes are just likely and which are an inevitable certainty. For example, the population in this last simulation always reached fixation, 100% of the time, no matter what. But Yaya was the fixed replicator only 97% of the time. Fixation was an inevitable certainty, while Yaya being fixed was only the most likely out of several possible outcomes. So we've reached the end of the video. If you've completed the first puzzle too, you should now have a score out of 30. If you come by our Discord server and tell me your score, I'll add it to our leaderboard. There are several more puzzles on the way, although the difficulty will only be increasing from here. I have a Patreon page you can join in case you want to support me. The student here will give you access to Ghost Garden and you'll be able to create your own evolutionary simulations like this from your own computer. Until the next one.
Take care.